praise the Lord and welcome to Father's Care Church Online. We are so blessed and privileged to have you join us here this morning. And I know that we have an awesome service in store for you. So just before we get into it, let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the glory and the power forever. Amen. 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 I know that we have an awesome service for you now. So let's just get ready to clap our hands and lift up a joyful noise unto our maker as we get into worship with the Father's Care worship team. Praise the Lord and welcome to Father's Care Church. We're so blessed and privileged to have you join us here this morning. So we're going to just jump straight into it and we're going to give God our every praise as we adore and as we worship the name above all other names, Jesus. So come on, lift up your hands, clap your hands and sing with us. Your great name, Lord.
you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. There is healing in your name. There is only one name under heaven given to man that man shall be saved. And that's, that name is Jesus Christ. That saving name is Jesus Christ. For he is our rock. He is our fortress. He is my refuge. Under his wings I take my shelter. Lord, we just trust him. Come on, let's just open up your heart unto him. Let's just worship. Yes, Jesus. Bavar ke beech mein Tu kehta hai tam ja Tu meri taakat hai Tu hi mera imaan बबर के बीच में तू कहता है तुम जा तू मेरी ताकत है तू ही मेरा ईमान गीत कल में तू साथ मेरे था आज भी मेरे साथ है खड़ा
staying safe and staying connected with one another. Even though we are not able to gather together in person right now, we want to encourage you to connect with us through our different avenues. If you have any prayer requests or in need of a person to talk to, simply contact us using the details on the screen to get in touch. Every Sunday night at 6pm, we are meeting on Zoom to take Holy Communion together as one family, as well as fellowship with one another. We definitely encourage you to join us online, ready to worship, pray and fellowship with one another. We encourage you to continue your generosity and giving what belongs to the Lord. On the screen are our online account details which you can use to tithe. Now, let's prepare our hearts for the Word and what the Lord has in store for us today. Praise the Lord Church and a very warm welcome to each one of you. Thanks again for joining us in and wherever you are watching this from, we know that the presence of God is meeting you right where you are. Well, I have a word for you this morning. And so if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Romans 8 and verses 31 to 35. Come on, let's read the Word of God together. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us, who shall separate us from the love of Christ, shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus and through your precious blood, we are in your presence this morning. Thank you for the word that's coming before your precious people. Let it indeed be my mouth, but your words. Let your anointing flow in this place, uncompromised, unhindered. Let minds be renewed, lives be transformed, the body of Christ edified, and the name of Jesus glorified. Have your way, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, we pray and ask. All honour, all glory, all praises are yours. In Jesus' name we pray and ask. And everybody said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I have a word for you. And the word is, He is for you. Once again, He is for you. And so if you are watching with your family this morning, give somebody a high five and say, He is for me. If you have nobody to high five with, come on, high five with me. He is for me. Hallelujah. That's the word of God for us this morning. You know, perhaps you are in a situation in this season. Maybe you are facing a setback, something that is causing you discouragement, disappointment. God is saying to you that those setbacks are temporary. I'll say it one more time. God is saying to you, beloved, that those setbacks are temporary. He is for you and he is on your side. You see, since the beginning of creation, enemy is slandering the name of God and even so much more in this pandemic. So he wants us to believe. He wants us to, you know, doubt 
God's love for us. And he wants us to deceive us into believing that God is the cause of our setbacks, our disappointments. But I want to tell you this morning, beloved, God is not an author of evil. From the beginning, he only authors good. Hallelujah. He only authors good. He is good and he does good. The Bible says in John 10:10, 10, 10, the thief does not come except to steal, kill, destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and life in abundance. So God is always an author of life and abundant life. And so this morning, this message is coming to you, a word in season to encourage you, to remind you, beloved, God is for you. Hallelujah. And so the text that we read from Romans 8 verses 31 to 35, to give you a bit of a background, you see Paul is speaking to the church in the form of five questions that are to me almost rhetorical in nature. See, his intent of asking those questions was not to get an answer because in those questions already lies the answers, the obvious answers of the victory, the favor, and the love that has been bestowed by Father God to his children, to his church, to the body of Christ. And in, know, in, and in knowing those questions, Paul was trying to bring edification to the church so that the church may rise up in that strength, in that confidence to face whatever they were facing, knowing that God is for them. And so this morning, as I present to you this message, as we look further into the questions that Paul was asking, in the form of those questions is coming an encouraging message. And I pray that as you open your heart and your mind to receive this word that God is for you. You know, question one is in verse 31, and I'm reading the Passion Translation. So what does all this mean? If God has determined to stand with us, tell me, who then could ever stand against us? You know, the word for me means, or for you means, that he is on our side, beloved. He is standing with you. He is with you. He is in you. That means every time he sees you, he sees you with favor. He sees you with kindness. He sees you as his own. See, he is always cheering you on. He is your biggest cheerleader. Every thought, every intent of his towards you, beloved, is only of good. See, that's why Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says, the thoughts that I think towards you are of peace and not of evil, to give you the future and a hope. So 24 hours a day, beloved, every thought of God towards you is good. You know why? Because he is for you. He is on your side. In fact, I love what Psalm 139 and verse 17 to 18 says, how precious also are your thoughts towards me, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they would be more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with you. In other words, if you, you and I both know that we can't count sand, Likewise, we cannot count the immeasurable, precious, oh, great thoughts of God towards us, which is only good because he is for you. He is with you. He is standing on your side. Beloved, God is not devising plans to punish you. So in this season, perhaps as you are facing those setbacks, perhaps you are facing some kind of discouragement. You know, the enemy is whispering thoughts 
that you know because you are this and because you are that see now you are not getting to your destiny and maybe God is punishing you because of all that you have done beloved I want you to negate those whispers of the enemy in Jesus name because that evil whispering in your ears is the deception of the enemy if God is punishing us then in that case my question would be please explain to me Romans 8 and verse 3 the amplified version says for what the law could not do that is overcome sin and remove its penalty its power being weakened by the flesh that is man's nature without the Holy Spirit God did he sent his own son in the likeness of sinful sinful man as an offering for sin and he condemned the sin in the flesh subdued it and overcame it in the person of his son in other words Jesus was punished for yours and my sin at the cross and so if Jesus took the punishment of our sins Jesus died a gruesome death because of our sins. The Bible says he was bitten, he was stricken, he was afflicted, he was despised. He went through agony, excruciating pain that even our mind cannot comprehend it. And so if Jesus was punished for our sins, then why would God be punishing you and me now? So beloved, know that he is for you. In fact, the Bible says in Isaiah 53 and verse 10, that yet it pleased the Lord, our God, to bruise his son. You know why? For you. Because he is for you. It gave him pleasure to inflict the punishment of your sins on his son. That you may be redeemed. That you may be forgiven. That you will never be punished for yours. Why? Because he is for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to know this. Because you've been entertaining the deceptive thoughts of the enemy that God is against you and because you are not worthy, that's why your plans are not working. That's why you are not progressing. But this word is season is coming right now to break every stronghold of the enemy in the name of Jesus and to remind you, beloved, precious child of God, that God is for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. He will contend with him who contends with you. Because the Bible says if God is for us, who can be against us? What can be against us? The Bible says in Isaiah 49 verse 25, But thus says the Lord, For I will contend with him who contends with you, and I will save your children. And so he is not only for you, but he is for your children. He is for your children's children. He is for your generation ahead. Because God is for you. He will deliver your children. Whatever family situations that you are facing, know that God is for you and your entire household and your posterity to come. Hallelujah. Beloved, he has not forgotten you. You know, Israel in Isaiah 49, the nation of Israel, the question came, you know, in their affliction, they thought that God had forgiven, for, forgotten them. Sometimes those thoughts are inflicted upon us by the evil one, that God has forsaken us, God has forgotten us, we are just a number in this big, wild, big world. But this message is coming your way to tell you. Isaiah 49 verse 15 to 16, the Passion Translation says, you know, Yahweh responds to the concern. Maybe someone's concerned this morning. God is answering you with Isaiah 49 verse 15 to 16. He is saying, but how could a loving mother forget her nursing child and not deeply love the one she bore? Even if, if a, there is a mother who forgets her child, I could never, no, never forget you. <laughs> he says, can't you see? 
I have carved your name on the palms of my hand. Your walls are always my concern. Why? Because he is for you. You know, we know that on the earth, mothers are one of the most closest relationship we can have. But the word of God is saying to us, God is saying to us, that even if there is a situation where you have been forsaken, but let me tell you, God will never forsake you. You see, your walls, walls represent is symbolic of your limitations, of your struggles, of your pain, of the obstacles, of the hindrances that you are facing in this season. God says they are before me 24-7. Why? Because he is for you. He has never forgotten you. He cannot forget you. He will never, ever, ever forsake you because he is for you. He is on your side. Somebody needs to know this, that your concerns, your welfare is in the presence of the Lord 24-7, child of God. Hallelujah. Nothing can prevail against you. This morning, I want you to know, so whatever you are facing will not prevail against you, but you through him will prevail against it. You know why? Because you can never lose when you follow the victor, the conqueror, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the overcomer, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you are his child, you can never lose. You know why? Because he is for you. Hallelujah. I don't know who I'm speaking to this morning, but I know somebody needed this word that God is on your side. He is with you, child of God. Do not give up. Hallelujah. Whatever you're facing, in that sickness, he wants to heal you because he is for you. In that lack, he wants to uh, give you prosperity because he is for you. In that brokenness, he wants to restore you because he is for you. Come on, child of God, whatever your situation is this morning, whatever bondage you may be facing, whatever addictions you may be facing right now, I want you to know, no, 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 he's not holding that against you. He is for you. He wants to deliver you. He wants to set you free because liberation is your bread. Freedom is your bread. Healing is your bread. Inheritance is your bread. It belongs to you because he is for you. Hallelujah. The second question Paul says to the church in verse 20, 32, again, that passion translation, he says, for God has proved his love by giving us his greatest treasure, the gift of his son. And since God freely offered him up, as the sacrifice for us all, he certainly won't withhold from us anything else he has to give. In other words, God is not withholding your blessings. You see, beloved, delay is not a denial. Delay is not a denial. If God gave his best, that means his son Jesus, why would he withhold the rest? And so Paul was telling the church to think God has not withheld his very best, his most precious treasure, his son. He gave his son even while we were yet sinners. Why would he withhold that healing? Why would he withhold that restoration? Why would he withhold that job from you? You know why he wouldn't? Because he is for you. He said in Matthew 7, 7, Ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the doors shall be opened to you. In fact, he says in Matthew 7, verses 9 to 11, the Passion Translation, he says, Do you know of any parent who would give his hungry child who asked for food a plate of rocks instead? Or when asked for a piece of fish, what, what parent would offer his child a snake instead? If you, that means us imperfect as we are, know how so lovingly to take care of your children and give them what's best, how much more ready is your heavenly father to give wonderful gifts to those who ask him? Hallelujah. That means when we as parents full of imperfections, we only want the best for our children. You know, we don't deny them. 
We are not withholding anything that is going to be good for them. Likewise, somebody needs to know that if God has not withheld his best, why would he withhold the rest from you? Know that he is for you. And the third question Paul asks, which is in verse 33, Romans 8 verse 33, the Passion Translation. He says, who then would dare to accuse those whom God has chosen in love to be his? God himself is the judge who has issued his final verdict over them. Not guilty. Ha <laughs> ha. In other words, it is God who justifies us. That means he's declares, he declares us blameless. He's put us into a right relationship with him. You know, every accusation, the false ac accusation and allegation of the enemy is silenced by the blood of Jesus. You know, Paul is saying that if enemy is bringing false accusations and allegations, remember that God has justified you with his blood. You are the chosen generation. You're a royal priesthood. You are his elect. That means every charge is to be silenced by the blood of Jesus. The Bible says in Revelation 12 and verse 10 that the enemy is the accuser of the brethren. And Revelation 12 11 says that we overcome him by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. That means his blood has been shed and his blood has justified you, redeemed you and made you his own. In fact, what I want to say to you this morning is that his blood has made you to be in a right relationship and a right standing with God. You see Hebrews chapter 10 verse 16 to 17 says, this is the covenant that I will make with them. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds I will write them. And then he adds, their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Therefore, brethren, in Hebrews 10, 19, Paul said to us, brethren, having boldness then, enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus. You know why? Because he is for you. He's not against you. The blood of Jesus gives you an access into his presence 24-7. Somebody needs to know you. So don't quit worshipping him. Don't quit praying to him. He is for you. The blood of Jesus has justified you. You are the elect. Go into his presence anytime, anywhere, because he is for you. Hallelujah. You know, the question four. In verse 34, the Passion Translation, he says, Who then is left to condemn us? Certainly not Jesus, the Anointed One, for he gave his life for us. And even more than that, he has conquered death and is now risen and exalted and enthroned by God at his right hand. So how could he possibly condemn us since he is continuing praying for our triumph? Jesus is not condemning you, child of God. The Bible is very clear in Romans 8 and verse 31, verse 1. There is now therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ. In Romans 4.29, the Bible says that he was delivered for our offenses, but he rose for our justification. And so the question is this, if Jesus is not condemning us, then what is Jesus doing right now? Do you know what he is doing? He is interceding for you and for me. The Bible says in Hebrews 7.25, the Amplified Version, therefore he is able also to save forever. That means completely, perfectly for eternity, those who come to God through him, since he, is, he always lives to intercede and intervene on their behalf with God. Don't you ever think that Nobody is praying for you. There may be nobody praying for you, even if that is the case on planet earth. Know that your Lord, that your Savior, the anointed one, Jesus Christ, he is interceding for you even right now, presenting you before Papa God, praying for you that this son of mine, this daughter of mine will fulfill their destiny. You know why he's praying for you? Because he is for you. He is with you. He is in you. 
He stands on your side, beloved. Even if people are condemning you, you know what he said in Isaiah 51 verse 7, he said, listen to me who know righteousness. You people in whose heart is my law, don't fear. Do not fear the reproach of man, nor be afraid of their insults. Hallelujah. You know why he said that to us? Because he is for us. In fact, I think this is a great point, a reminder for the church. And I present to you a question that if Jesus does not condemn and is praying for his church, then what are we doing? What are we doing? The Bible says that Jesus is not condemning you, child of God. You know why? He is for you and he is interceding and praying for you. And my final point, Paul's final question, five, verse 35, Romans 8, 35, the Passion Translation says, who could ever divorce us from the endless love of God's anointed one? Absolutely no one. For nothing in the universe has the power to diminish his love toward us. Troubles, pressures, problems are unable to come between us and heaven's love. What about persecutions and deprivations and dangers and death threats? No, for they are all important to hinder the omnipotent love of God. You know, Paul is very qualified to say this. He went through a lot. He was afflicted, he was persecuted, he was imprisoned, he had to go without food, he was uh, faced dangers amongst his own people, and yet he was persuaded. He said, I'm persuaded that nothing, 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 past, present, future, nothing can separate you and me from the love of God. Nothing can separate a, a child of God from the love of God. You know, even in the midst of pain and loss, God's very present love is always there, abounding towards you. You see, hardships and setbacks don't diminish God's love for you. Because God doesn't love you based on who you are and what you do. God loves you and me because God is love. He cannot help himself but to love us no matter in what season we are in. So child of God, don't ever believe that your hardships and the setbacks or the challenges that you are facing in this season has diminished or decreased his love for you. Never, never. That is the lie of the enemy. God loves you unconditionally. His love for you is agape love. Nothing can stop him. No one and nothing can stop him from loving you. You know why? Because he is for you. The Bible says that God is love. 1 John 4, 8. And so God is love. And so love has promised you that he will never leave you nor forsake you. Love has given you His Spirit. Love is with you, in you, and for you. So beloved, I want you to know that you are eternally loved. And because you are eternally loved by Father God, nothing can come against you. Nothing. The weapons, the Bible says weapons will prosper. Isaiah 54 and verse 17. You know, the enemy may form weapons against you but let me tell you they will not prosper against you he will try his best but he will not prosper against you and so as I leave you with these words Isaiah 43 verse 2 the passion translation he says when you pass through the deep stormy sea you can count on me to be there with you when you pass through raging rivers you will not drown when you walk through persecution like fiery flames you will not be burnt. The flames will not harm you. You know why? Because He is for you. Child of God, this message has come your way to negate those negative thoughts, those thoughts that have been tormenting you and lying to you, that God is punishing you or is against you in this season of challenge. 
This word has come to rectify and to reveal the truth of the Father's heart that no matter where you are, what season you are facing, God is for you. And I'd like to pray for you this hour. So wherever you are, just open up your heart and let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus and through your precious blood, thank you, Lord, that you have brought this word as a word in season, as a rhema word for someone out there, Lord, who needed to know that He is for you. God is for you. No matter where you are in this world, you, God has not forgotten you. God has not forsaken you. He is not punishing you. He is not condemning you. In fact, child of God, know that Jesus is interceding for you. He sees you. He hears you. And in these coming days and weeks and months and years ahead, expect miracles, expect healing, expect deliverance, expect restoration, expect the dreams and visions to be fulfilled. Expect that your destinies are being fulfilled because He is for you. Father, I cover your precious people under your blood. Protect their going out, their coming in. I pray no evil shall befall them, no plague shall come near their dwelling. For you shall give your angels charge over them to keep them in all their ways. In Jesus' name, we pray and ask. And everybody said, Amen, Amen, Amen. To God be the glory. Stay blessed. Mm -hmm.